Welcome to this bite-sized video for the Digital Support Services T-Level, where we'll explore Task 4 for the Digital Support Employer Set Project. The Employer Set Project consists of a series of tasks designed to assess the five assessment objectives shown. And this skills assessment is set and marked by NCFE, where students will need to apply the core knowledge and demonstrate the core skills from the specification. The ESP is conducted during a two-week assessment window, which will be available during the summer and autumn terms. Tasks are designed to replicate the real-life industry experience, and we used employer and industry experts when developing the ESP to help achieve this. And this video will focus on task four, where students will be performing a reflective evaluation. And they will be assessed against assessment objectives two, four, and five. So assessment objective four, focusing on communication and their demonstration of English skills. Task four is the final task to be completed by students, which is a provider scheduled session lasting three and a half hours, with an additional 15 minute supervised rest break also being permitted. And if students have any access arrangements or reasonable adjustments, such as additional time for assessments, then you should apply that internally and increase the task time by the relevant amount. The assessment materials should only be available and accessible to students during the supervised sessions. So do take account of this and ensure you have secure storage areas for students to save their work. Students are allowed access to the internet to help them complete this task. And they're also allowed access to their previous ESP elements, except for the task two interview audio recording. Task four is an evaluation worth 12 marks in total. But the use of English is also marked holistically with its own marking scheme. So the examiners will award a maximum of four marks for English skills, but it's based on the student's performance across tasks two, three, and four. And those marks are distributed over two activities. A satisfaction survey designed to review the solution the students put in place and an evaluation in the form of a project review. Those 12 marks are split equally over both activities, with six marks for the survey. And shown on screen is the highest band marking descriptors. Students will need to consider who will be completing the survey to ensure the language and questions are appropriate. They should gather both qualitative and quantitative data, and it should gather both current operational feedback and possible areas for development. And the post-project review is assigned the remaining six marks and students will need to consider their own performance on each task, explaining the actions they took, what worked well and what could be changed and how that change would have impacted on their performance. And adopting a reflective cycle, such as Gibbs, for example, might also prove useful for students. But vital as always is making reference to the brief and ensuring that it's relevant to the scenario and context provided. Some advice when it comes to the satisfaction survey is to include a purpose, as this can be useful to help ensure students are really focused on the requirements from the brief. And this can actually be copy and pasted from the brief itself. Then who is receiving the survey and on what information would be useful to know about that individual, such as which department they work in, as different business areas might face their own challenges or different needs. And considering the audience is useful when composing the questions and using suitable language, terminology and contextualized examples as appropriate. And students should consider the qualitative and quantitative information that will be useful to obtain and choosing a suitable question type to gain that insight such as multiple choice questions and whether they want users to choose just one option or multiple options or more simple direct questions 
where users might decide if an aspect is applicable to them or not, for example, such as using certain applications or accessing resources, or a rating system, such as a sliding scale or a star rating, or even a rank ordering system where users select or prioritize certain activities or options. And the use of open-ended or closed-ended questions to gather some feedback on the solution too. And for the project review, much like the survey, the inclusion of a purpose can again help ensure that it's focused and relevant to the brief, with the audience who will be reading the review also being considered with technical terms and language used for a technical audience. And adopting one of the reflective cycles from their learning can aid with the reflective evaluation. And they could use separate headings on their review document in order to support the model they've chosen. But ensuring they mention the actions they decided to take for each task and why they took that approach. Then evaluate and decide if they would amend their approach next time and how that change would have affected task outcome and their performance. We hope you found this useful and have a better understanding of task four and do see our other bite-sized videos that form part of this employer set project series. Thank you.